Hey guys, Matt Gusman here, back with another video, and today is going to be about how to get the Robotics Merit Badge. So, recently I actually went to summer camp, and that lasted a week long, and I'm supposed to be getting six Merit Badges soon. That One of them that I completed was the Robotics Merit Badge, so today is going to be about how to get this one. For some reason, it's not a requirement, so I'm just going to say that the definition, or a simple definition of a robot, is a machine that is designed to execute one or more tasks automatically, or that is programmed to do something. So the first requirement of robotics says about safety, do each of the following, so all of them. A is to explain the most likely hazards that you may encounter while working with robots, and anticipate, mitigate, prevent, and respond to those hazards. So just an explanation on different safety hazards that you could encounter. Also, describe the appropriate safety gear and clothing that should be used when working with robotics. B says to discuss first aid and prevention for types of injuries that could occur in robotics, activities, and competitions. And that includes cuts, eye injuries, and burns, chemical, or heat. So you're just basically describing what kind of injuries could you incur when working with robotics. Alright, the number two is about the robotics industry. This requirement wants you to discuss the following. A. The types of things or kinds of things that the robots can do and how robots are best used today. And B. Says to discuss the similarities and differences between remote controlled vehicles, telerobots, and autonomous robots. C says to do three different methods that robots can use to move other than wheels or tracks, and then describe when it would be appropriate to use each type of method. Three is about the general knowledge of robotics, and it says to discuss three out of the five major fields of robotics, and those five are human-robot interface, mobility, manipulation, programming, and sensors. After you're done, discuss the importance to robotics development. And also with three, you need to either explain the three fields as they relate to a single robot system, or the three fields that you chose uh, in each field in general with pictures or at least one video to aid in your discussion. So, you, after you choose three fields, you can, you, you can discuss them all as a whole, or discuss them individually. Four is about designing, building, programming, and testing. And this one is a long one. I don't know why they didn't just split it off in the two different requirements, but it says to do all of the following. A, with your counselor's approval, choose a task for the robot that you plan to build and include sensor feedback and programming in the task and document your information in your robotics engineering notebook. B says to design your robot. The robot design should at least use sensors, programming, and have t two degrees of freedom. And document your design in your notebook using drawings and or a written description. C says to build a robot or a robotic subsystem of your original design to accomplish the task that you chose or requirement for A. So you don't need technically need to build an actual full robot as long as you have a task that you want it to carry out. So instead of building an entire robot, you could, let's say, build an arm that can hit something and it censors it. So it censors what you want to hit and then it hits it. That could even count for that as well. So that's how you do this requirement. And the last one, sorry, not the last one, but the second to last one, discuss with your counselor the programming options available for your robot and then do either option one or option two. So a little bit about me real quick. When I was programming, there wasn't much to do, but uh, I did mention that we built a robot, and how it worked is we had a team of about five of us, and we used a Lego robotics instruction kit. So the robot was made out of Lego, but also had these motors that had attached to the Lego, which means we had to program the motors to this small device that also attached onto the robot. So we had three things. We had the robot as a whole, but inside it we had the small program box, and then we also had the motors that were, could be programmed into doing the different things. So the programming we had were the, they were all the same motor, but depending on what Lego design you put on it, it could do different things. So they, they all rotated, but depending on what you put on them, they could carry out different tasks. 
So back to this, 4D option one. Option one says to program your robot to perform the task you chose for a robot in 4A, which with, with mine, we just had it go forwards and see if we could program it to, to move, to, to move basically. We wanted our robot to at least move after the building and include a sample of your program's source code in your notebook. So since we had the instructions handbook, we didn't, um, our counselor said that we didn't need to copy that in our notebook. We just had to show him the instructions and what we followed from the, the manual, if that makes sense, because the pictures are already there. So our counselor told us that we didn't have to copy the same exact thing into our notebook. We just had to show him which one we used. Option two says to prepare a flowchart of the desired steps to program your robot. So if you're not able to program your robot, let's say you didn't finish building it in time or you don't know exactly how to program and you're running out of time, you could just have a flowchart of what you would want to program it with. So with us, we had a little bit of time left, so we did do option one, but we just barely finished. So if you, do, if you are running out of time for some reason, it's probably better to do option two. Or if you don't have a computer to program the robot with, so it says to prepare the flowchart for it and include the procedures that show the activities based on sensor inputs and place this in your robot engineering notebook. Now the last one for four, E. Test your robot and record the results in your notebook. Include suggestions on how you could have improved your robot as well as pictures or sketches of your finished robot. All right, five is about demonstrating and it wants you to do the following. A. Demonstrate for your counselor the robot you built in requirement four. So if you did program it, this is when you'd show your counselor what your robot can do. And actually, I have footage of when we finally programmed our robot to move, and here it is. It works, <laughs> just barely, but it works. This is our robot. You killed it. You ripped its head off. You killed the robot. Now I am angry. <laughs> we programmed the robot to do 20 rotations on its motor, which means it was able to go all the way across the floor. But unfortunately, as I recorded, of course, the battery had to run out, so it only did that weak spurt that you just saw. And then we had to break it apart, so we got we were just messing around while we were breaking it apart. But yeah, we built it, we programmed it, and we did our notebook and showed it to our counselor. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward, and it was really fun too. I just wish that we didn't have to <laughs> break it apart. B. Share your notebook with your counselor. So I was the scribe, as you could say. I was the one jotting down notes and stuff. So I was like saying what each different member of our team was doing. So like one person would build, one person would hold the instructions, another person would gather what pieces we need, another person would like uh, uh, experiment with different add-ons we could maybe modify the robot with. So we all had different jobs to do and you just have to jot things down in your notebook on your findings and how well your progress is. So talk about how well your robot accomplished the, the said task from requirement four and also any improvements that you would make in your next design and what you learned about the design process. Number six is about competitions. Do one of the following. You could attend a robotics competition and report to your counselor what you saw and learned about the competition and how teams are organized and managed. Or if you don't like that one, you can choose B, which is learn about three youth robotics competitions and tell your counselor about these, including the type of competition, the time commitment, age of the participants, and how many teams are involved. With robotics competitions, it's kind of hard to get to one if you don't know where to go. So we just did B, we talked about different types of competitions, and our counselor provided that, us with that information. But if you are into competitions, like say your school holds an uh, after school program on robotics, that's what one of my friends do, does in, in my troop. He goes to a robotics class after school where he can learn more about it. And they actually go to competitions stately 
like statewide and they go and compete in different levels so when he did the merit badge which is about one to two years ago that's what he, that's what he did he did the first option all right the very last requirement is about careers name three career opportunities in robotics pick one and find the education training and experience required for that profession after you're done, discuss with your counselor and explain why this profession might interest you. So there were a lot of professions to do with robotics, so I'm not going to just pick one out of the air because there's too many for me to just name. So I'm just going to call it good, and thank you for watching my video on how to get the robotics merit badge. If you did enjoy this video, please like it and turn on notifications on my channel. And look out for any other videos on my channel or videos in general, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.